Hello everyone, Soprano Theories here and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, be sure to click subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all upcoming Sopranos content. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for the big three odor zones, your body, butt, and of course, your balls. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their all-in-one Perfect Package 4.0. Let's check it out. Guys, as we know, it's always important to keep your hair groomed up top as well as your face, but it's also important to keep down there nice and clean and fresh as well. This is the Manscaped 4.0. 4th generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, the Lawnmower 4.0, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. The Lawnmower 4.0 is cordless as well as waterproof, so you can trim in the shower, which is really convenient and makes for an easy cleanup too. This Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer has a super smart charging system with a wireless charging dock and these little LED lights on the front to show how much juice you have left. And the Lawnmower 4.0 has up to 90 minutes of use with a full charge. If you tap the button on the front three times, it enables the travel lock feature, which is great for traveling. Also included in the Perfect Package 4.0 kit are the two products that I never knew I needed until now. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Simply apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for a full day body odor protection. The Crop Reviver is a convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. And Manscaped didn't fall short of thinking of their disposable shaving mat called the Magic Mat. It has a ton of funny content and some hair design recommendations if you're feeling, well, ballsy. For a limited time, you can get all this plus two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use the promo code SOPRANO20 at checkout. Manscaped has all the perfect tools for your family jewels. Now let's get right into the video. As we all know, Tony Soprano isn't a saint by any means. As throughout the course of the series, we watch Tony commit numerous crimes and sins, whether it's murder, adultery, extortion, or money laundering, Tony Soprano is the typical mobster. But nowhere do we see more heinous behavior from the mob boss than in one particular episode, and that is in Season 6's Episode 16, Chasing It. While this video won't necessarily be analyzing the episode itself, as some fans and critics tend to view this episode as one of the worst in the series, and view it simply as just a throw an episode, in this video I'll be analyzing how in chasing it, we see the worst possible version of Tony Soprano, and we also see just how far he's fallen and that the episode centers around money. By this point in the series, audiences have learned that Tony has quickly developed a gambling problem, as we watch him wager a large amount of money at the casino, only to lose it all. Later on, Tony gets a visit from Vito's widowed wife, Marie. Marie wants $100,000 to relocate her family as a result of her son, Vito Jr., acting up. This could not have come at a worse possible time for Tony, as he likely doesn't have the money to give her, nor would he really want to help Marie out. Because in hindsight, Tony didn't want to have Vito whacked, and that Phil should have to pay for Marie's relocation because it was Phil's decision to kill Vito, on top of the fact that he's somewhat related to Vito. With Tony in debt to himself, he is reminded by Hesh of the 200000 that he owes him. Earlier in the series, Tony was reminded of a flashback that took place at Satrial's, as we saw Mr. Satrial get his pinky chopped off by Johnny Boy Soprano as a result of being a degenerate gambler and owing Johnny Boy some money. Tony's father told him that day that he should never gamble, and we see now that Tony disobeyed his father's wishes by developing his recent gambling addiction even before this episode, as Tony's obsession with gambling has been brewing for some time now in the later half of the sixth season. Anyway, I, I needed a little bridge loan to cover some of the gambling losses we've been talking about. Still. You know, good money after bad. Why not just stop? The episode's title, Chasing It, refers to a line that Dr. Melfi says during a therapy session. But if you couldn't lose, what's the fucking point, huh? So you need to risk. What are you chasing? Money or a high from winning? Later on in the episode, while paying Tony and the guys a surprised visit at Satrial's, Tony mocks Hesh, which is actually sad as Hesh is one of Tony's closest friends and was also a friend of his dear father. 
As we see here that Tony mocks Hesh for coming to say hello, and embarrasses him in front of everyone by making a hostile Jewish stereotype remark, and really calls Hesh out on the only reason he comes to pay a visit is to collect his money. Not it, eh? He's here for the rent. The rent, the rent. I got some spare change here, too. He's all worked up or something. I don't like the way he talks. Hostile remarks. It's not like him. We see that this entire scenario of Tony avoiding Hesh's payment is causing Hesh some health problems by developing high blood pressure. As Hesh is clearly worried that Tony will eventually just have him killed due to the fact that killing Hesh would be cheaper than to pay him back his 200,000. Eli, at what point is it cheaper for him to settle it another way? Ironically, we then cut to Tony gambling some more and playing blackjack. As Tony and the guys leave, Tony spots a horse race that is minutes away from starting. And one of the names that catches his eye is a horse named Meadow Gold. Ironically, the horse being a reference to his daughter Meadow, and also Tony's late horse, Piomai, who tragically died in a fire and who he also loves so much. Much like all gambling addicts would do, Tony decides to wager the entire 18,000 that he had from winning blackjack, all on Meadow Gold. To no one's surprise, Metal Gold loses the race by a short margin, and Tony continues on with his gambling ways. In this episode, we see the worst possible version of Tony Soprano, and that it's so visible throughout the entirety of this episode, as he later threatens to smash Vito Jr.'s face through a glass window. When Carmella breaks the news to Tony about closing her house, and tells him that she made close to 600000 Tony, being the gambling addict that he is, suggests to Carmella that she should throw some of that money down on the Jets, by stating that it's a sure thing that the Jets will win because the Chargers' quarterback has a hairline fracture that apparently no one knows about, not even Vegas. When Hesh unexpectedly paid Tony a visit at Satrials, Tony ironically does the same to Hesh by surprising him at his home with Bobby Baclieri, as this surprise visit almost acts as a threat to Hesh as he tells Renata to lock the door upstairs. Later on, we see that Tony's inside scoop was right, with Tony wanting to put some of Carmella's money on the Jets. Carmella calls Tony out and says that the next time he wins, she'll take her own cut. But if we think back to earlier on in the series, Carmella already did take her cut by taking $40,000 from the bird feeder in the backyard and investing it into the stock market. As we saw this in Season 4's Episode 8, Mergers and Acquisitions. To Carmella's surprise, she's in shock that Tony knows about her devious behavior when it comes to the $40,000 that she stole. In a relationship like Carmella's and Tony's, it's very clear that Tony is the provider for the family as Carmella is just a stay-at-home mom and housewife. A project like her spec house was an investment in business opportunity for her own future and if god forbid anything were to happen to Tony. Because we all know and she knows how the mafia life works being surrounded by it for so long. Even if the spec house was viewed as her project or the result was her money, it's technically not. As we all know that Tony was the clear provider for the entire process of the home being built. And a spec house? I made the down payment. I bought the materials. I leaned on that building inspector and you would your thumb up your ass. So stop talking about your money! Let go of me, you piece of shit! In this heated conversation, we can see the ruthlessness of Tony and just how cold-hearted he truly has become since the beginning of the series. Fact is, you're a shitty businesswoman who built a piece of shit house that's gonna cave in and kill that fucking unborn baby any day! When I'm gone, you can live in a fucking dumpster for all I care! We see later on that Tony is still not learning from his gambling losses, as he decides to put $100,000 on Philadelphia as they're playing against the Miami Dolphins, who just so happen to be starting a backup kicker who's right out of college making his first career start. Again, just like Meadow Gold, to no one's surprise, we learn that Miami defeated Philadelphia 21-7 on the radio, and we later see the same thing in basketball. To feel good about himself and make him feel like he's a good person despite his gambling habits and what he said to Carmella, Tony offers to pay for Vito Jr. attending a tough love camp in Idaho, which supports a $18,000 price tag. Towards the end of the episode, we can see that Tony Soprano's gambling is even affecting those who aren't necessarily involved with his habits or his lifestyle, as Hesh's girlfriend suddenly passes away. 
To make Hash feel as if Tony is sympathetic towards the death of his girlfriend, Tony finally pays Hash the rest of the 200000 that he owes him. And this is not because Tony wants to, it's because Tony has to out of sympathy to make Hash try and forget about his late girlfriend, Renata. Once Tony leaves Hash's house, we can see that he doesn't truly care as we see no emotion resting on his face. As we see here that Tony never really did care about paying Hash's money back to begin with. What makes this episode so powerful and important for the growth and overall progression of Tony Soprano is that we see he hasn't really grown at all. That all of his therapy sessions with Dr. Melfi have done absolutely nothing. She can't convince him to get a grip on his gambling problem or ultimately try and get him to become a better person in life. As one can't simply change a career criminal and sociopathic murderer like Tony Soprano, no matter how hard Dr. Melfi or Carmela try and convince him otherwise about his habits as Tony Soprano will always forever be evil. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and click subscribe. For more Sopranos content, keep it locked here, right here on this channel.